Okay, are we on? All right, we're on. All right, give me the scotch spray, Charlie, come on. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. All right, how y'all doing? This is Pete, uh, my friend Pete. Now what we're doing today, we're working on a brand new bumper cover. This is a brand new one, never used. And this is what they look like when you get them, they're black. Now this bumper here is actually half texture, which means it doesn't get painted if you look at the blue line right there. I mean, not blue, yellow, Charlie. You see the yellow line there? The bottom of that is a textured black finish, which stays black, and the top is painted. But the problem we have with this, it doesn't have any factory sealer on it. It's raw plastic. Now what makes your bumper cover different, okay, from other bumper covers is when it's in raw plastic, it takes more preparation, okay. It's very easy to scratch that bumper cover. You want to use the right tools, the right sanding equipment to make the job right. So when you do paint it, you don't have gouges and scratches all over your bumper cover. A lot of bumper covers that you buy are going to have factory, fin uh, factory primer on the bumper cover where you don't have to mess with it. This one here doesn't have it. So this is what this is about. This is about getting that bumper cover, prepping it the proper way, and painting it so the paint will stick. Okay, And there's some key, uh, key note jobs that you have to do to this to make it right. And if you don't follow this procedure, the paint will peel off of it. So if you look at our bumper cover, you're going to see that it's got a very, very shiny finish. That means that that's raw plastic straight out of the mold. Okay, And that's another reason that if you buy a bumper cover and you're thinking to yourself, wow, why was that so cheap? That was a pretty cheap price because it doesn't have a finish on it that you can paint on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a Scotch-Brite. What is a Scotch-Brite? A Scotch-Brite is a pad, a scuff pad. And there's two different types that we use. We got a red scotch bright, which is coarse, and we got a gray scotch bright, which is fine. We will not be using the red scotch bright. That will gouge and scratch our plastic. What we are going to do, though, we're going to use the gray scotch bright. We're going to cut it in half or tear it, whichever is convenient for you. And you're going to go ahead and lightly scuff down the surface without using a lot of pressure. Okay, you're going to do that in a way, all right, where it's actually abrasing to the surface. And when I say abrasing, I mean sanding. We do not want to use any sandpaper on this. We do not want to use wet sandpaper. We do not want to use dry sandpaper. The only thing that we are going to use is a gray scotch bright to scuff that down with. And if you notice as I'm scuffing it, the finish is turning to a dull black, okay? If I rub my hand across it, you can see there's nothing on it except raw plastic. It's very important to be very careful not to gouge your plastic. Make sure that you go over it thoroughly. Make sure that you go over it thoroughly inside and out all the crevices that's another important thing is getting down inside all the crevices like you see right here okay it's very important that you sand that because that's where the peeling will start that's where the paint will start to peel off if you don't sand that properly take your scotch bright okay bundle it up into a nice tight uh, section and fit your finger or your thumb down in there and get those corners very thoroughly Make sure you get along the edge here of your texture. Always remember to take the edge of your textured surface off. If you look right here, you can see that's what we did. This will not be painted. This is a textured surface, so we're going to leave that alone. But I taped it off on this edge because I don't want my Scotch-Brite to scratch it. Because if the Scotch-Brite scratches the textured surface, what's going to happen, you'll see that gouge in it from the sandpaper, and it'll look like shit. You might want to go over it several times to make sure that you covered it. You want to sand it one way first. 
and then come back and sand it another direction. You want to crisscross your patterns, okay, to make sure that you've covered every square inch of that surface and sanded it properly. We got Charlie here today, over here, Charlie, right here, but okay. How you doing, Charlie? All right. Are you learning anything? Yeah. Okay, Charlie is going to get that bumper ready for paint, okay? And uh, it's going to take him a few minutes because that is a big job. But uh, Charlie does know what he's doing, and Charlie will do it right. Here's your scotch brush, Charlie, because I got body work to do on another car that I'm working on, uh, 1974 Carmen Ghia. So I'm going to let Charlie work on that. He's going to get all scotch bright down, and then we'll go to step two. Don't go away. We'll be right back. That's right. Yeah, right there. Make sure you get them grooves real good. Get it good, Charlie. Edges and all. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.